More problems for California, more problems for San Diego. Hey everybody, Scott Walters, buckle up, strap in, we got a hard hitting pull, no punches, no sugar coat in it, no rainbows, no sunshine. It's going to give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to unpackage today. Welcome to the show. I hope everybody's doing great. So California is overheating again, leading the charge in the most unaffordable state to live. And that's where I'm currently sitting in an episode of Million Dollar Listing, celebrities climbing all over themselves here in this city. It's absolutely borderline embarrassing for me because this used to be such a cute little sleepy beach town, but now we've been infiltrated by Hollywood and the Hollywood elites, and now everything's gone completely uh, bonkers. But here's the challenge. We've got a lot of big cities, whether it's Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego. Throw a dart at a map of California. You're going to hit a city that's overheated, overnight appreciation to never seen before highs. And friends, that constitutes, and yes, I'm a licensed real estate agent, helping a lot of you right now make hopefully smart decisions. I benefit from this euphoria. I'm calling it, I'm calling a spade a spade. This was a real estate bubble, but this isn't a garden variety bubble. This is a super bubble. It's not only a super bubble, it's unorganic growth market manipulation, overnight appreciation to never seen before highs. And people wanted to normalize that. They wanted to tell you this time was different. And I've always said since day one of this channel, you're right, it is different. This time is worse. Bigger bubble, bigger blowback. So today we're going to take a look at a listing. I like examining listings because that's the world I live in. And I know I, a lot of you, especially during the crisis, especially during the crisis, my phone went from ringing once in a while with somebody on the internet on Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com, browsing properties, requesting information and showing whatever. And it was absolutely ridiculous because the phone started ringing off the hook the property you were calling on was already probably off the market, already had an offer accepted. I mean, we were selling houses before we could even get yard signs uh, out front of these properties, and it was completely embarrassing. And it was just, it was, um, it was painful to watch people overbid, overpay, waive inspections, waive contingencies, buying houses they wouldn't look twice at because they're the FOMO, the herd mentality the fear of missing out. And we're talking about, especially where I live, we don't have brand new developments to speak of, like these big tracks that pop out in the middle of nowhere with these big homes designed under a think tank with model homes the two are staged to perfection to get you to fall in love with it. And listen, I've worked with so many buyers. I always say, the second I sell most people a house, they don't own that house. The house owns them. It's all about the house. And I've walked in those shoes before. In the two, I bought in 2007. I caught the dreaded falling knife. I, hang, I hung on to that property for a while. I had other good property that I bought. Well, this one I didn't because at that time, the narrative was similar to the narrative that we had this go around. It's a good time to buy. The market's softening. Blah, 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 blah. Now, had I, I will say this. There's one caveat. Had I hung on to that house, eventually it would have climbed out, but it would have needed lockdowns in a stimulus era to bring it back out of the hole or the purchase price that I had bought it at. So this was a complete anomaly. So I want you all to really just understand that. Now, my job is to continue to show you what hopefully you want out of your next real estate agent. And if you need one, just reach out to me. I have the biggest network of top rated agents in the nation ready to assist you. But I want you guys to see a level headed realist, not these people telling you, well, you better buy now and things are still really hot. You know, interest rates are. No, this is a simple equation of risk tolerance, examining real estate's local. All areas are going to behave differently. My advice it always will be. Get an agent that you know and trust that you wouldn't mind hanging out with because that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to work with this person. All the calls I get are typically from people that actually trust me or like me or would be friends with me, right? If I don't like you, I'm certainly not going to use you as my agent and give you a bunch of commissions or let you just walk me in off a cliff. No, I'm an, I need some level of trust. So as I unpackage listings, and I kind of blow them apart as we read between the lines and look between the cracks just to kind of see how I want you to approach these houses. Unless it's your forever home, and I talk to a lot of you, hey, Scott's my forever home. I got an open checkbook policy. I'm interested in this house. Can you make it? Can we, you know, go see it? Absolutely, we can. But if you're out there trying to, I don't know, 
find a deal, find something reasonable, something that makes sense. The, the one advice, I, especially in the crisis, I, don't fall in love with the house because the second you fall in love with the house, they got you. Now, our job as real estate agents is to help you fall in love with the house. So let's go ahead and jump over to a listing in San Diego, a hot spot that had an overnight appreciation and then a lot of social turmoil, we'll just call it, to be politically correct. The, the, there's just so much going on in these cities now that are making them just not safe, really. It's a big thorn in the side for a lot of these cities. I know you guys are seeing the New Yorks, the San Francisco's. We're going to take a look at San Diego right now at a listing, a random one that I picked, just so I could go ahead and take a look at it with you and show you exactly what's going on, not only in San Diego, but all across the country. Let's go ahead and jump over to that listing, then we'll meet back here and wrap it up. Let's get started. All right, friends, buckle up, strap in, roll up your windows, lock your doors as we head into a downtown San Diego. And it's not all that it's chalked up to be. This beautiful city has been mismanaged and homeowners are scrambling for the exits. Let's go ahead and jump into today's featured listing. Let's bring up today's crash map, courtesy of our good fuzzy friends and failed iBuyers over at Zillow. All right, now let's go ahead and tour today's featured property. And here we go. It's a condo, although it looks more like an apartment to me, but that's not what's important. What's important here? Our property is doing what? You guessed it, sucking air. No tenant, no owner occupied. We are empty, empty, empty. No revenues coming through. And strike two, no professional photos, cell phone photos. That's not going to get us sold bad lighting, and strike three, possibly the knockout blow, we didn't even stage our property. Nobody's going to be able to visualize themselves enjoying a property when it looks like a ghost town. But wait, there's more. Let's buckle up and strap in and look at our property description. What's special? Welcome to this enchanting top floor. Two bedroom, two bath. Wait a minute. Top floor? You mean I'm climbing steps? That doesn't sound enchanting at all. And of course, they went on to write a novel. Our description is a mile long. You have about 15 seconds to grab the attention of buyers. And when you write a long, tired description, you're going to lose them about halfway through and they're already onto the next property. Don't believe me? Just take a look at this. After being listed for over a hundred days, we have a whopping, a staggering 13 views. 13 views. Our property is getting little to no interest. I would be pulling my listing if after a hundred days, I only had 13 views. Clearly we did something wrong, but wait, it gets better or worse, depending on how you look at it. Properties now showing the kiss of death, price reductions, doing one a month for the last three months, now priced at $465,000 still with no takers. But wait, it gets better again. Our property was sold in the 2000 era for almost $300,000 and then took a massive hit and sold for $95,000, a massive haircut in 2011. Is it headed for that direction again? Logic would tell you, don't be surprised. Let's get back to the studio and wrap this one up. All right, friends, welcome back. And there you go. Can I interest you in making an offer on an apartment? That's what that thing looked like. And it was empty and sucking air. Almost, well, it, was, it was almost a half a million dollars these things going for, for a tired old condo that has a lot of unsavory activity going on inside the neighborhood. I mean, this just makes no sense. That property has been sitting for 100 days, and I think I said it had 13 views. It had 13 saves. That's what you really need to look at. You want to know You want to know if it's time to write an offensive offer, a lowball offer? That's what you look at. How many days on market? Is it going through the kiss of death price reductions? Is it empty, sucking air? And that, that's really what we need to see. And then how much interest it's getting. How many saves, 13 saves, that thing's in massive, massive trouble. Now, this particular owner apparently has owned it for a while, and that's why they're hanging on by their fingernails and doing what I say never do, chase the market. 
in this instance, in any market, but especially in this market, what I usually, I have to have blunt conversations with a lot of times. I just, I'm, I got a condo on the market right now where I live and it's well over a half a million dollars for a one bedroom where I live. It's more expensive, but it's a nicer condo. Hey, listen, this is the deal. Um, you know, if I, we need to figure out what our value range is. We got to run the comps, recent sales, then we'll determine what your, your property's worth. And then we got to decide where we want to come on the market. And that's going to depend on how it shows. If you're staged to perfection, maybe, and depending on how much inventory is out there, maybe you can come on on the upper end of its value range. But if you're not looking too great, how am I going to get every eyeball in that price point in town over to get walk through my open house with your property if I've come on the top of its price range? I need to do what? Find out who my competition is and beat them in final thoughts. I come to you as a friend, as a content creator, as a real estate guy who wants to see you not only win in real estate, win in life. Understand the waters you're swimming in now. They're shark infested. San Diego. Welcome to the swimming pool. We took a look at a listing there today that has no business going for what it's going for. It's chasing the market with little to no interest. My anticipation is this thing's going to go for a lot less. And if you notice, that thing sold in the last crash for under a hundred thousand dollars, ninety-five thousand to be exact. And listen, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it tends to rhyme and that's why i would never rule anything out in this real estate bubble and that's why i'll be here to blow the lid off it every step of the way because it's not only what we need it's in fact what we deserve if you appreciate the content i want to humbly ask you to give the video a like subscribe to the channel leave a comment below i'd love to hear from you social media links in the description of this video if you'd like to follow me there along with the links to channels i've appeared on i think you might enjoy if you enjoyed this video you're going to love the next video and there's an easy subscribe icon for your convenience as always, thank you for your time. Please go make it count today. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video. Mail Scott Walters Real Estate at gmail.com for an agent near you.